Hello, my dear student. In continuation with your main topic, that is algebraic fractions. What we are going to discuss the last in this main topic is on defined fractions. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student will be able to explain the conditions for a fraction to be undefined, and the number two will be also be able to find the value or values of a particular another equation which makes that very fraction undefined. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual, in ever write a segment of the lesson, my dear student, today I'll give you another interesting number. This number is one, the very first counting number. This is so unique, so special. I'll tell you what is unique about this very number after completing my lesson today, so don't go away. To begin the lesson, my dear student, let me first define what is undefined fraction. A fraction is undefined if it is denominator is zero. That is, if the denominator of your algebraic fractions happens to be zero, then that fraction is now said to be undefined. It's the same case happens to your numeric fraction. If the denominator of that numeric fraction is zero, the fraction is undefined. Let's just see examples of undefined fractions. Example 2 over x. This fraction 2 over x is undefined if x is now take the same value 0. That is, you now have 2 over 0. You can see denominator there will be 0, so it will be undefined. Another fraction is 3 over 3 plus x all over x minus 2. This fraction could be undefined if the value of x is now equals to 2 because uh, Substituted x by 2 there, you now have 2 minus 2 in the denominator level, and this make it 0 because 2 minus 2 is 0. So this fraction will not be undefined if x equals to 2. Similarly, you have another fraction x squared plus 3 all over x plus 5 into x minus 1. This fraction will not be undefined if x takes either minus 5 or positive 1 because in each case if x is minus 5 this very first bracket you now have minus 5 plus 5 which will now be 0. 0 times whatever the second bracket is the entire denominator will be 0. So the entire fraction will now be undefined. Similarly if x is equals to 1 this second fraction will now be 0 because you have 1 minus 1 which will be 0 times the first bracket Whatever it is, the entire denominator will be zero, and that very fraction will now be undefined. And last, you have 7 over 10 minus 2x. This fraction will now be undefined if x were 5, because substituting x by 5 there, you have 10 minus 2 times 5. Minus 2 times 5 gives answer minus 10, so you have 10 minus 10, which in the end, your denominator will be zero. So this is the definition of undefined fraction. It's just a fraction that has a denominator zero. So let us learn the rule that if we are to find the particular value that makes a given algebraic fraction undefined, how do we determine that value? Let's just learn. So the rule to determine the value or values of the unknown that makes your fraction undefined, let's take the rules. So rule number one says simplify the fraction to its lowest term or to its lowest form. That is that a given algebraic fraction you need to simplify it. We learned that in our very first lesson in this main topic. When that is now done, you now equate the resulting polynomial you have at the denominator level. You equate it with zero. That is you look at your denominator. That polynomial you have uh, you now just write it equals to zero. So you now have a simple equation and you now solve that resulting equation. That is the equation that you have just obtained in step number two. And the solution of that very equation is what uh, you now have as the value of values that makes your algebraic fraction undefined. So let us move and take examples how we can make use of this. There is steps to find the value of values of a particular unknown that makes uh, that makes your given fraction undefined. So example number one it says for what value of x is this fraction 3x minus 12 over x squared minus x minus 12 is undefined. 
solution to this very problem copying the given fraction there to simplify this that is what we do first in trying to simplify you have to factorize your numerator factorize also your, your denominator possibly there will be common factors among or between your numerator and your denominator there you can cancel out so let me factor this uh, my numerator i can divide 3x and minus 12 by 3 so there 3 outside you now have x minus 4 this is the factorization of this numerator that is 3x divided by 3 gives you x minus 12 divided by 3 gives you minus 4 so i'll now look at my denominator here i'll also factorize it this is a quadratic function the factorization of this gives you x minus 4 into x plus 3. So you now check, uh, you can see x minus 4 is a factor here at the denominator level. Another factor x minus 4 at the denominator level. So these two are common. So they can cancel out. So this you have in the end uh, the simplest form to be equals to 3 over x plus 3. This is the simplified form or the lowest form of this very fraction. It is now that I will move to step number two. Step number two says look at the simplified form or the lowest form of your fraction that is after simplified. Look at the denominator. Take that denominator, the polynomial you have there, simply said equals to zero, that polynomial equals to zero, and solve that very equation. So I'm now going to have. Uh, x plus 3 equals to 0. This equation is what I'm going to solve. So solving means I'm now doing the step number 3, which is the last. So to solve this, what you simply do, take this positive 3 to the right-hand side, where to change it to minus. So you're going to have x equals to minus 3. So this will now be the solution to this very equation. And it is the value minus 3 for this x that will make this fraction undefined. Therefore, we now say that the fraction is undefined when x is equals to minus 3. So let us move and take another example. Example number two it says for what value or values of x is the simplified form of this very problem, that is the simplified form of this, that very fraction is undefined. So we have to perform this very division. The final result we simplify it. And that simplified form of the result, we look at it is denominator and think what value will make it zero. It is that value of the unknown that uh, will make this also, will make the simplified form of this undefined. Let's just move. Solution to this very problem. Copying the given task, that is, we are asked to perform this division of this two algebraic fraction. 2x squared minus 2 all over x squared minus 6x plus 5. This fraction is to be divided by x squared plus x all over 7x plus 7. Remember to do division, we always change it to multiplication. We learned that in one of our previous lessons. So this division, division by fraction, we always convert the division to multiplication. Let me do that. So I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have my first fraction instead of division. I will now have multiplication, but instead I will now multiply it by the reciprocal of this. This x square plus x will now go as your denominator, while seven x plus seven will now move up to become your numerator. So I'm going to have times seven x plus seven all over x square plus x. I'll continue. So next is to perform this multiplication. To do the multiplication, remember you now look at the two fractions. All those that are factorizable, you factorize that then. After factoring that, you can now see whether you have some common factors between your numerator and your denominator. So let me just write the factorized form of each. So start with the numerator of my, of my very first fraction. I can factor 2 here. Let me just write it. 2 out. Then inside the bracket, you now have x minus 1 times another bracket x plus 1. These two brackets are simply obtained after factoring 2. You now have in the end uh, 2 into x square minus 1. And that uh, x square minus 1, because 1 can be written in index form, 
as uh, 1 raised to the power of 2, you now apply difference of 2 squares to factorize uh, x squared minus 1 is what gives these two brackets. Uh, that is 2, the one that is outside times uh, the factorization of x squared minus 1, which gives answer x minus 1 into x plus 1. If I now move to this denominator of the very first fraction, this is another quadratic function. It is factorization will now be x minus 5 into x minus 2. Then you copy the second fraction and this factorization here, 7 can divide 7x and 7. You now have 7 into x, x plus 1 over the factorization of this denominator. That is, you can divide x square and x by x. So you now have x outside, then x plus 1 inside the bracket. This is the factorization of each and every of these numerators and the denominators. So what remains now is to perform this multiplication. And multiplying what we do first is to cancel out those common factors between the numerator and the denominator. I have x plus 1. This is another x plus 1. They can cancel out. Let me check again any other common. Any other common between the numerator and the denominator. That is all. So canceling x plus 1 and x plus 1. This is the only common factor. So what remains uh, at the numerator level, you now multiply. And what remains at the denominator, you also multiply. So multiplying the 2 by this to 2 brackets and 7, you now have uh, 14 into x minus 1 into x plus 1. I just copied this 2 bracket, but uh, multiply 2 by this 7 to get 14. Then this 2 bracket, what remains at the denominator level, and this x also, let me multiply them. So I'm having x into x minus 5 into x minus 2. So this is now the simplified form of this very fraction that is after performing the division. So what remains is to look at your denominator and equate that polynomial denominator by 0 and solve that equation. So I'm going to have solving this my denominator equals to 0. So solving this very equation, that is x times the bracket x minus 5 times the second bracket x minus 2 equals to 0. So solving this, we now simply said it is either this x is 0 or this bracket x minus 5 that is 0 or this x minus 2 that is 0. For me to have 0 as the final product, definitely one of these three factors must be 0 or both of them. So this gives me x equals to 0 if it is this x that is 0. O x equals to 5 if it is this first bracket that is 0. O x equals to 2 if it were this x minus 2, the second bracket that is 0. So which means for this simplified form of this very problem, the resulting fraction to be undefined, x can take these three values. So now write it therefore. The simplified form of this is undefined if uh, or when x is 0, or x is 5, or x equals to 2. This is how we now find or determine the value that makes a particular fraction undefined. With this, my dear student, I hope you'll be able to find the value or values of a particular fraction that makes it undefined. Let me just move to the last segment, Mercy Span, and I explain what is unique about the number 1. So one it says is the only number spelled in the reverse alphabetical order. That is mean if you have to spell this number one in English and spell all other numbers also in English language, what you now have it is only this one that uh, if you look at the letters used there, if you look at the letters that there in the spelling are exactly in the reverse order. This is our alphabet in English language that is A, B, C up to Z. And if I now just figure out the spelling of 1, the spelling of 1, look at O, look at N, look at E. If you take it from the right back to the left, you see that it is O, N, then E. But all other numbers, I tell you, if I have to write their spellings in English, there will be a skip. You may not have this reverse alphabetical order. Reverse alphabetical order means from Z to E. Thank you for your attention. We see more of these interesting things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.